watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UA TV. This weekend, one brave Canadian Ukrainian woman will embark on a 650 kilometer walk from Kyiv to Varokta in western Ukraine. This journey is called Walkathon, and its goal is to raise awareness of the current problems Ukrainian orphans are facing these days. Today, we'll speak more about it with Ruslana Vzesnevska. She's the president and the founder of Help Us Help the Children. Hello, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So tell, tell us more about this initiative, the Walkathon. So the Walkathon is the beginning of the celebration of the 25th anniversary of Help Us Help the Children, uh -huh. which is part of the project of Aid Ukraine, which is a Canadian charity. Uh, and uh, the volunteers have been working for 25 years. We have generation upon generation of um, volunteers that come from Canada and Ukrainian volunteers. The Walkathon is to celebrate the fact that for 25 years, as a sustainable organization, we have managed to help a lot of children that have grown up in orphanages. However, the orphanage problem has still not gone away, and they have become the hidden problem. They are, and especially after the war uh, in 2014 that's happened, they have become the forgotten victims mm. in the orphanages. There has been a lot of children that have become now social orphans after the war. So the true orphans have kind of, there's less of them, they've diminished, but the orphanages have been now filled with social orphans, P parents who can't take care of their children, uh, widows, uh, because soldiers have died, um, widowers, and other uh, economic problems. So, the, because of our camps that we have in summer since 96, where over, over the past many, many years, over 10,500 children have gone through the camps, one of, the, one of our life skills groups is actually walking in the mountains, reaching the top, showing them that even when they reach their goals as reaching Hoverla, which is the top point of Ukraina, that these children can achieve anything in life. This mm -hmm. is what the positive that we try to give these children. While doing these life skills groups, and especially with the uh, walking and the mandriuke, as they're called in Ukrainian, we have realized that this helps children. It gives them a positive kind of um, effect, that they can succeed at anything if they're allowed the chance. And I discovered during these 25 years that I also enjoy walking. And what, an, an, what a beautiful way of celebrating 25 years of what I feel is very successful work in Ukraine by walking and rediscovering Ukraine by foot, finding out the spirit of the villages, finding out the spirit of the children and speaking to everyone. Driving the car, done it for 25 years, but it's a totally different adventure. Hmm. Just, you just mentioned that you've been doing this for 25 years yes. now. Over this uh, time period, what would you say are the main problems of orphans? The main problems of orphans is the fact that there shouldn't be orphanages. That, Agreed. Uh, that the reform program, and I'm hoping that Pan Kuleba will be able to succeed with all the reform programs, we're hoping that orphanages are a thing of the past. The most traumatic thing for social orphans is, no matter how bad it is at home, but to be taken away from your mother or your father... Is even your, worse. Is, ...is just so trying, and it t causes many more emotional, I think, traumas than um, being left there. Better for a system that comes as community groups or helps or rehabilitates the parents or allows them somehow to stay with that, uh, their family have support groups, etc., which I think is what Mr. Kuleba is working on to make sure that these children do not get separated or segregated from their parents. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, orphanages is, um, I call it in, in English, it's prep up for prison. It's oh. not a system. It's not a system that is successful. A lot of the children come out of the orphanages, they don't know how to, they have no basic life skills. This is something that we try to teach at camp. We see ourselves, the Help Us Help the Children organization, as a transition between orphanages and once that children have, uh, when the orphanages disappear. In that tra transitional period, what we try to do is give them basic life skills. Like we, what? For example, things like um, psychological, psychological, yeah, psychological, yeah, um, uh, growing to have increase their self-image, understand why they're in the situation they are, teach them budgeting, teach them how to fill, for example, um, interview so, applications. Wait, so I, I just want to clarify. So presumably, kids who are raised in full families already know all this, or 
Well, Ooh. they have, some of these kids don't know that or they've been put in the system so quickly, they've been traumatized. So our basic life skills tries to teach these kids through different activities, mm -hmm. through different types of, um, and they have a choice of activities. Not a, in every activity works for these children. Exactly, but there the are children other are all things. different. They're yes. different individuals. So we have art classes, we have a, sh can I say this in Ukraine? They have shveni, like sewing classes, mm -hmm. computer classes. They have hiking. They have um, singing, but singing where, you know, uh, different art, Ukrainian artists come and teach them how to sing. They yeah. have concerts. They're, it's a it's a very multifaceted program mm -hmm. that allows children to find out who they are, what they want to be, and who they can become. It's also an in, uh, very integrated. It's a program where we mix children from the east and the west, from the south and the north. And p kids from Lviv get to meet kids from eastern Ukraine, even kids from the front line. We bring a lot of kids from the front line to camp. Mm -hmm. And they integrate. Um, we have a lot of successes. After two or three weeks, you know, a lot of these children start to speak Ukrainian when they haven't. We have Ukrainian volunteers and Canadian volunteers. Mm -hmm. They integrate. They start to learn each other's culture. Ukraine stops being an abstract for Canadian volunteers. It becomes reality. It becomes concrete. And all of them become addicted to Ukraine. They fall in love with Ukraine. This is so great. Over the past 25 years, could you probably, um, maybe you want to share a success story of, of one of the kids that struck you the most? Oh, there's so many children uh, to spotlight one. Yeah, I know hard. it's hard to pick one, but okay, you can, you can share two if you want. Okay, well, we have one one child. He's now, this is the first generation. So we've gone through three generations of children already, mm. right? So if we started in 93 and we started with camps in 96, the first generation of children have already grown up. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have become professionals. That's what I want to hear about. And they have come back as mentors to the second generation. The second generation is now mentoring the third generation, which yeah. are the more, mostly social orphans. Now, are they volunteering to mentor? They volunteer okay. and they mentor. They come back to camps. They come back with their families. They come back with their wives. The cycle has been broken. Their children do not land up in orphanages. That in itself is a success. Mm -hmm. There's many, many children. One works for Apple as basically general manager for Eastern Ukraine. Impressive. And she's, yes. Another one works for a high-tech company in Barbados. He's now come back to Ukraine to help and mentor the kids. Another one is in Verkhovna Rada as a consultant mm -hmm. to one of the depu deputats. We have a lot of kids right across the board. Another one had just had a film pr produced about her on CBC Doc, which was in the film festival in Canada. There's children everywhere. And the best, we have kids working in our office that were kids that are now grown up and our wanted employees. to stay and work with you. But the best success is measured by the fact that these children want to come back to camp and help with the next children. And as a matter of fact, I think that that's the best way because they know the system and they understand the mentality, the emotions, the ups and downs of this next generation of children. And they go, hey, look at us. We made it. Yeah, they you can, can also make set a too. great example of Absolutely. being successful and making it in Absolutely. this life and in mm -hmm. this world. Uh, if you have already existed for 25 years, mm -hmm. but are you planning on expanding? It's all about costs. This is a volunteer organization. This mm -hmm. is, um, it started grassroots 25 years ago with a whole bunch of friends that were like-minded that decided that something has to change in the system of the orphanages in Ukraine. At that time, there were no supplies. The, everything was in very bad shape. That generally improved in terms of medication, clothing, you know, the, the humanitarian aid aspect of it improved. The buildings improved. However, they should not be a place where you harbor children. Children should not be in orphanages. I, you know, after seeing this for 25 years, I am even more convinced that there must be a better way. Would you say living in a community or being adopted by a family? What, which, which variant is better? It all depends. Living in a community is not bad. Fostering is not bad. But, but again, the infrastructure has to be put in place and it has to be very tightly controlled and monitored, mm -hmm. that there is no abuse or exploitation of children. Community living is also not bad. If you've got the right or occupational therapist, if you have the right people working around them that visit, that do this outreach programs, yes, it can work. Mm -hmm. But adopting is also great. What a fantastic way. I adopted my four do fourth daughter from Ukraine. I, I gave birth to three and I adopted my fourth oh. daughter. And that's what got me started when I saw that 
basically my child was very ill when I brought her home in 93. And after many months of visits to the hospital, uh, the doctor turned around and said to me, this child won the lottery. What about all the other children you saw in Ukraine? And that was like uh, someone so put that out. was the mm -hmm. message. That, that was, and all of a sudden I realized I can't, I can't stop just because I adopted one. What about all those thousands of children in Ukraine? That is the next generation. That is the Ukraine. We have to make sure that Ukraine is healthy. Otherwise, there will be no new generation. Oh, my God. Do your kids help you? all the time. One is a volunteer. She's going to be running all the camps. Another one is bringing her son now so that he can be introduced to the whole program. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do help all the time. Thank you for the wonderful job you're doing. Thank I you. am so much impressed and so is our audience. That's what I say. And think. the walkathon, if people want to join us for the walkathon on Sunday, 930 in front of the Canadian Embassy. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want more information, you can go on www.huhtc.org. Huhtc.org. Dot org. Okay. See you in, on Sunday. Okay. Thank you so much. That was Ruslana Shisnevska. She is a president and a founder for Help Us Help the Children. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.